So pay attention because he is absolutely correct here in what led to this, the three main events. The first one is based on the book that was written by Dr. Morris Bukel called The Bible, the Quran and Science. It was written in 1976. And as you can imagine, this book basically said the Quran is in line with modern science. The Bible isn't. Muslims took this, translated it in many languages. I believe even some people memorized more of this book than they did of the Quran, right? It just became, a, it was a movement. Uh -huh. Even some academics have called this movement Bukalism. That's what, okay? that's what There are some now. journals that basically talk about this movement and refer to it as Bukalism. And it was, uh, that book is, I mean, that is massively deceptive. I mean, you'd have to be an yeah. idiot to read these passages as confirming uh, various scientific theories. And uh, that's why, I mean, Again, Maurice Bukai worked for King Faisal, uh, was not a Muslim, didn't convert, works for King Faisal, um, and uh, comes out with this book uh, saying that the Quran is filled with these scientific miracles, and uh, Muslims ran with it. Uh, they rallied around that, and so that's basically the Andrew Tate of its time. It's the Andrew Tate of its time. The new thing that everyone clings to because yeah. they're desperate for confirmation. The second milestone was something called Commission on Scientific Science in the Quran and Sunnah, which was a commission in the 80s that produced a video called This is the Truth. And this was run by Sheikh Abdul Majid Az Zindani. Now, what they did in the 80s, I believe it was 1981 or 1982, is that they invited scholars, scientists from the West mm. to Arabia and basically <coughs> somehow got them to say some special things about the Quran. Yep. But we now know this is not true. The majority of those scientists have retracted those statements or have said that we, have, we were quote mined or whatever the case may be. And, and by the way, that was uh, Zindani. That, that guy was buddies with uh, Osama bin Laden. And if you, oh, yeah. look at, if you look at the textbook that they put out about, these scientific, uh, about some of the scientific miracles in embryology and so on, the, uh, the, um, the, uh, you know, the, the list of people you're, you're acknowledging at the beginning. So the acknowledgments, Osama bin Laden's on the list as one of the guys who is funding this back in yeah. the early 80s. But you recall this because there was an awesome article. If you look up Wall Street Journal Scientific Miracles or something like that, it pops up. But in 2002, someone went and investigated this, went to the scientist. The actual method was, and these guys, they had it all planned out. They know what they're actually, they know what they're doing. And guess what? You could use this. If you really wanted to be deceptive, you could use this method to defend anything. You could use it to defend anything. So if you wanted to defend the scientific um, accuracy of some Hindu book, let's say, uh, just go in there, find some, find some Homer. It doesn't matter. Uh, find some things that are, you know, sound like they could be correct scientifically. Then invite, let's say, a hundred scientists to, uh, to come and analyze various, uh, quote mind quotes and ignore the context and so on. Give these guys a free vacation, have them bring, you know, have them bring their spouses and so on, bring them over, shower them with gifts, shower them with free vacations, money, all this stuff. Then put them on stage in front of a bunch of Muslims who are looking, you know, looking, uh, you know, enthralled by these scientists and so on. Put them on stage, give them a quote and say, is this impressive? Could Muhammad have known this? If you have 100 scientists, like 96 of them are going to say, no, I'm not impressed by that. Some of them, you can, you can prod them and they'll go, oh, yeah, that's really amazing. I'm just shocked by, by how amazing that is. And then, of course, for your dawah, you only quote the ones who actually confirmed it. And then later on, when these guys come back and, and, are, and are interviewed and they say, I was just trying to be nice. It was, you know, <laughs> they're, they're paying for all this stuff. I wanted to say something nice. That's what the guys actually said later on when they're asked. Mm -hmm. They're saying they're basically trying to be nice. Uh, but you only quote those guys. You ignore the fact that they that they say, I, I didn't seriously think this is impressive. And you and you run around with it as a scientific miracle. You can walk up to a dawah table. To, you can walk up to Sheikh Uthman Ibn Farouk's dawah table today, pick up a brief illustrated guide to understanding Islam or one of their science tracks, and it will still use these particular guys from 1981 as the proof of the scientific miracles. So Hamza is not exaggerating here. This was a, it was a big scam. It was funded by terrorists and it was completely deceptive. It's a method that you could use to defend anything. And this is the, this is the evidence for Islam. You know what my problem with Hamza Tortsis is? Uh, Tortsis. 
So I, that's what I said. You said you uh, said you you combined it there. You said tortsis. Okay, I'm just trying to make it easy. <laughs> uh, I read. I I bought his book. Um, his one book, which is called The Divine Reality. I bought that like quite a while ago and I started reading it and I started reading the first chapter. And sometimes I have a little bit of a, of a problem, I guess, with um, when I get a very bad first impression, I feel much less motivated to read the, re the rest of the book. And the book starts with uh, the best place to start uh, to start is with a definition. Atheism linguistically means not a theist. In other words, someone who does not believe in a God or gods. Um, no, he, so he says atheism linguistically means not a theist. First off, that would be atheist, not atheism, because atheism would be, if that is correct, uh, not theism. But then again, it also doesn't mean not a theist. It basically literally means uh, godless, you know, like without God. So um, he starts it. He starts all of it with a completely wrong uh, order and a misunderstanding of the etymology, although that is what he focuses on at the very beginning. Therefore, everything he says is wrong. And that, we, ladies and gentlemen, is AP nitpicking in order to avoid <laughs> the actual powerful arguments yeah, that Hamza yeah, precisely. Precisely. has presented. Uh, whose bookshelf do you prefer, Hamza Sorsis or Ali Dawa? Mine, probably. Uh, I think Hamza's is better, but I think mine is significantly better. Because again, these guys go to like Ikea and get this stuff. I go to the, I go grab some lumber and build mine. Lumber, paint, the heck. Yeah, I, don't even, yeah. I, don't even buy, I don't even buy nice wood. I go get the standard lumber for construction. But if you know, and you're an expert, you could do that sort of thing. That's true. All right, let's get back to Hamza's here. So he went through two. So he went through two. So Bukai's uh, book on the amazing scientific accuracy of the Quran, then this big stunt they all pulled when they all when that took off. And now we're going to have the third. Third one. milestone for this movement is the popularizers. You had the likes of Dr. Zakir Naik and Sheikh Yusuf Estes and many other callers to Islam. Sheikh Yusuf Estes, <laughs> the guy who that says always... that the... Roman Catholic Church was founded by Alexander the Great in Rome three centuries before Christ. <laughs> that's, the, that's the only thing I think of whenever I hear, I hear that guy's name. <laughs> Wait, so he's, uh, he's one of the popularizers of this, eh? Yeah. Super powerful intellect he's got. All right. 